Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And uh, we have freedom. no guest freedom. Well, we have a lot of freedom today because we got no guest. <laughs> That's so, why I just broke in. I had to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Good lord, what's going to happen today? I, I as always, <laughs> uh, will attempt to be your certified Greg Wrangler. I may get my certification taken away on today's show. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> But we've got a ton of questions to get to. There's a great post on diving into uh, video marketing on Inman that we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, we've got an app to share that looks pretty interesting. And uh, basically, we're going to answer a bunch of questions on uh, marketing and sales. We've got everything from scripts and objection handlers to uh, ex talking about expired listings, you know, objections from sellers and uh, all kinds of of stuff. So we've got a lot of stuff to get to. Before that, if you're joining, uh, joining us live, just want to thank you first of all. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and then uh, if you want the audio version nestled right between your ears where we so, nestled so belong. So deep. That's right. Make sure to subscribe <laughs> on iTunes and Stitcher. <laughs> Greg, the, the junior guy. grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel, what's up today? What's up, Matt? The Johnson. Dude, Today's like my Friday. I'm taking off on a trip uh, this coming tomorrow. Going to go unwind. I'm going to relinquish control of the podcast to you on Friday. So, guys, hang on. We don't know what Matt's going to do with it. But uh, I, for one, am afraid. But I trust Matt, and I, th I think good things will happen. So, um, in all honesty, though, I have I, I was doing some posts on the Legion Scripts and Objections page today. And some bag of dicks decided to chime in <laughs> don't smile matt not one <laughs> oh fucking comment bag, in there bag of dicks bag, bag of dicks bag, Big bag of, of dicks. dicks okay all right fuck him right. um he chimed in and he in his infinite stupidity decided to make a comment going oh cold calling's dead and it sucks and who has home lines and Oh, you're an idiot. Uh, and I was fired back. I'm like, fuck you, asshole. It does work. I make, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Good luck in whatever you do in, in, in lead gen. Boom, send, right? Then he fired back. You know, we went back and forth here a little bit. And then a bunch of other people were starting to jump in and, and kind of kick him around a little bit. So fuck you, dude. It, it does work. I mean, see, guys, this is a new member of my team, Midori. Midori, say hello to the world. Hello. Um, guys, she's 25. She's, she's cold called twice. And every time she's cold called, she's gotten a listing appointment. So cold calling is not dead. It's very much alive. You just actually have to pick up the phone. That's the, that's the hardest part about cold calling. That so, is the hardest part. Yeah. I really got to work on my emotions. I got to get more emotional. You know, I just, I'm so dead. I know. And you're, flat you're, a little, yeah, so you're a little dead. Pan. Yeah. <laughs> if you could just work up the energy in your delivery, that'd be great. I mean, so just punch, just punch it up. Punch it, punch it okay. up a little bit. I'll, yeah. I'll ratchet it up a little bit. That's right. Exactly. I mean, come on, like get your, get your carrot juice. All right. So, um, Actually, let's, uh, let's today. take a question. Let's, let's get the old, let's get the old juices flowing. So no pun intended. Uh, sure. Why not? Uh, <laughs> let's get the old carrot juices flowing. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so speaking of uh, calls, so th this is a good one. This is a little bit of an open-ended question. So Alex okay. Carlson Hilo, this is from the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Group, says, I just started making calls and was hoping to get some advice on do's and don'ts. What mistakes did you make starting out that you'd avoid if you got to do it all over again? So Greg, no, what say you? None, Matt. I, I never make mistakes. We know this, man. <laughs> 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 I was like, what the fuck? Um, no, uh, one of the things I did when I was uh, just getting going, uh, me being dyslexic, I thought I had to uh, stick to the script, read the script, you know, deliver my, 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 my value add or whatever the hell the script was trying to say. I would try to read the name and it'd be like, hi, is this, is this John? <laughs> no, this is Matt. Sorry about that. And they'd be like, yeah, click. And so I'd lose leads being dyslexic, honestly, no joking around. I'd lose leads because I'd try to say the name. Now, if you're not dyslexic, completely disregard this comment and you can use the names, but don't overuse them as well. Don't be like, so Matt, and then Matt, and uh, thanks Matt, and that's really interesting, Matt. And you know what, Matt, and at some point you're gonna come to the phone line and you're gonna wanna strangle me for using my name, your name so much. So yes. be, be authentic to your personality, don't call too early, well, don't cuss. My personality is to cuss continuously, like one just one big huge beep if it was ever to be edited, um, and just bring value. Like I was t working with my team today, doing some. Cool. I just missed the the, the desk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, see, that's being authentic. I you know, I screwed up on live air, and I'm like, oh, I just did that. Yeah. Um, and apologize and be real with the people. 
don't, okay. don't be like, oh my God, I missed something. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, click, and you, and you hang up because you're out of fear. Just enjoy the time out there. They know that you're real. They know that you're probably going to say something wrong. And you know, if you don't have an answer, then you don't have an answer. You know, Midori today, she since she's so new, she didn't have an answer for a guy. So I, I told her very quietly, I'm like, just have her have the guy give you his you know best time and you know number, and I'll call the senior partner will call him back. She said, I'm a new agent. I don't have that answer. I'll have Greg call you. Is that okay? The guy said, no problem. His name is Steve. We set a CMA for next week. So okay. it does work. Interesting. Those are the oh, and yeah, like I said, don't call too early. Don't follow a script. Don't sound like you're reading. Practice it. Don't be fearful because you know what? When you're doing the cold calls, guys, they're humans too. And if they are, they're if they're having a bad day, they're having a bad day. Let them have it and keep moving. Don't try to push all the way through that script and say, "Well, I've got to finish the script." No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. You got to be a human being. Okay. That's what I would do. That's where that's where some of the mistakes I made was what we just talked about. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I I think that as we've talked about this before. When you look at the guys that are really good at it, some of them, it's not that what they're doing is super complicated, but they 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 don't get flustered. Like you mm -hmm. said, they're they're authentic, and if they screw something up, it doesn't really bother them because they understand that that's not what's important. Right. What's important is they have the goods. They they know how to get a home sold. They know they know the process. They they can talk about the market all day long. So there's really nothing that that person can throw at you that they're not kind of prepared for. They've also gone through the various objections and they've just done it enough, just from sheer repetition, that they're confident that whatever that person throws at them, they're going to be able to handle. And yeah. there's just that that just it that there's no substitute for experience, first of all. But that kind of thing sure. comes through in your voice. You know, so that the, you can deliver the same script, the same words that a new person would deliver, but it comes across differently. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah. No, hundred percent. People pick that up. They really do. They can hear the, like the the panic in the voice, but yeah. you, you stay. The one of the things I, I was talking to somebody about this about cold calling, and they say, well, what happens, you know, when I get a lead? I say, don't hyperventilate. If anything, slow your speech down, slow your tempo down, act, just remain. Calm because if you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I got one. Well, then they're gonna feel like, who's this joker? And you've obviously never done this before because it's just a CMA. I'm not signing a contract with you. And yeah. but if you say, you know what, Matt, that's interesting. I really appreciate. It. You know, you let's get a, let's find a time that uh, that couldn't work for you and Julie and your three obese little fat babies, little wood denters. <laughs> Floor denters, not wood denters. Floor they, don't denters. Just, yeah. they don't just go out there and like bang on two by fours with hammers. <laughs> They could with their intelligence level. Kadoom, kadoom, right. kadoom. So my, my kids are not only overweight, they're also dumb. That's fantastic. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> just, we keep piling on the issues these poor children have. Yeah, exactly. Do they also have pimples? I mean, what's what like? No, they're not old enough for that. Have chicken pox right now. What's going on? No, right. no, no, they're not. They're not. They're not old enough for that yet. Okay. All right. Where were we? So just oh yeah, so being being calm and collected, and you know just slow. Uh, yeah, you say okay. Yeah, actually, I would like in a meeting. So my response would be okay. That sounds great. Um, what what's maybe a good day that might work for you? Instead of going okay. Um, so Wednesday at one or Tuesday at three. Oh my god, he didn't say anything. <laughs> oh god. Okay, I can, I can I can fit you in somewhere else. It's okay. You know. <laughs> That is that is the wrong way to do it. Be flexible, yeah. but be, but but hold your ground, okay. If you have set appointments in other places, don't be so reckless and just move them around just because. Oh my God, I, I caught one. So you know what? I can't do two, but I can do three thirty. Would that work? Was that okay with you? You might say, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, you know what? I can probably move some things around. Okay, not a problem, because you have to respect yourself and respect your calendar. Because that's what is that your lead generation. If you had not been sitting down and doing your lead generation right when you were, if you had moved that appointment for something else, then you wouldn't have that next appointment. And it's just it's a continual flow. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, 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 ever stop prospecting on a continuous basis. I had a call with a gal, very nice gal, uh, out of San Diego. You're in the neck of the woods. Yeah. And she was telling me that, you know, first off, she loves the show, um, but that she, <laughs> hello to you, anonymous person. That's right. uh, <laughs> uh, but she wanted, uh, you know, this perfect real estate life. And I said, okay, how many hours a day are you working? She's like five. I'm like, okay. So we're going to go to 10 and we're going to block out time 
so that you, you have to do the hard grind work, doing the calls, doing the follow-ups, doing all these things. You will get to that perfect life if you hold to your calendar, but you have to be willing to go through that. Are you willing yeah. to do that? She's like, yeah. She and I talked for about 45 minutes yesterday. Sweet gal. Put on the McDaniel challenge. Oh, dude. Dude. Okay. I know we're going to we're gonna hop off this question for half a second, but I've got to tell you this. Okay. McDaniel challenge, bro, is booked until February 13th. <laughs> Oh my God, I feel silly saying this. <laughs> so make sure, uh, gentlemen, that you get your, your February 14th Valentine's Day appointment with Greg. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it is Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, so it should Greg is available on February 15th, maybe. <laughs> should, probably block that. should probably no call. Yeah, that, that or if you, if you plan on having nobody in your life, maybe you just want to be on coaching calls all that, all that day. So just book Greg back to back for ten straight hours on Valentine's Day, so that you don't think. War movies, whiskey, and coaching calls. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes all at the same time. All right, let's uh, let's jump back in. I want to uh, continue on on prospecting here real quick. There's a really good question from Trina Harris. She says, as as I was door knocking the other day, one of the neighbors told me that their neighbors were thinking about selling. Mm -hmm. So I went and knocked on their door, but no one was home. But I left my marketing material. So what's the best way to go back and knock on that door again, but without leaving the same marketing material that I left previously? So Greg, and, and maybe we'll, we'll answer that question in kind of an indirect way, but Greg, how would you handle that situation? So you door knocked, the neighbor I, 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 says, hey, so-and-so is selling, you stop by, they're not home. Mm -hmm. Do you stop by again? Do you try to look up their phone number? You know, what do you do? So what I would say is this, the, the easy way to avoid not leaving the same materials twice don't bring the material. <laughs> Just gonna say that. Um, well, I for one am shocked. How dare, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you imply I not bring my marketing material? No, say it isn't true. Um, and then, you know what, keep going back and just, your, your, your script is this. Hey, Matt, Julie, your three obese little fat, wood uh, floor denting babies. Um, I, I, my name is Greg McCann. I'm a real estate agent here in the area. I came by uh, and dropped off a marketing packet. I just wanted to come back and make, I, I saw it wasn't on the porch anymore. I wanted to make sure some you know, neighborhood kid didn't steal it and you did get it and I wanted to just kind of see what your thoughts were. You know, just touching base, hanging out, doing your thing. If they don't answer, take out your business card like I have here. Flip it over. If you have. We actually use this backside and we leave it matte. So we can write on it, write notes on it. So then we can just stick it in the door. Hey, Matt, Julie, I sorry I missed you. I dropped a packet off. Wanted to see if you guys got it. Please give me a call when you get the chance. Greg, you know, with, with my phone number on it. Okay. So the very you know easy I like that to do, and don't stop, you guys. Eighty percent, eighty eight zero percent of all uh, leads and sales are you know, all sales are done between the fifth and the twelfth contact. So you might have to go back a few times. You have to remember that you're not annoying them. I mean, they'll tell you if they're if you're if you're annoying them, okay? But maybe that that four letter word called life is taking place, and they just didn't have the opportunity to get back to you yet. So be persistent on this. That's the other thing you need to you need, they need to understand too if they're going to you know do really well with the with the prospecting. Yeah. So okay. That's that's that, Matt. That's my thoughts there. Okay. Interesting. All right, so there's another one about uh, Fizbo's that we'll handle real quick, and then we'll give some shout-outs and stuff like that. So Mario Lemus, or Lemus, says, I'm representing a buyer, which I've already signed to a buyer's agreement, and he fell in love with a Fizbo help. So how would you approach presenting an offer to the Fizbo owner? Mr. and Mrs. Owner, I am Greg McDaniel. I'm a real estate agent here in the area. Um, I understand. I want to ask you real quickly: Are you uh, cooperating with agents in on commissions? If I was a bring you a willing and able buyer to pay you a price of your that you would accept, if they say yes, say fantastic. You're going to include a commission demand document in the offer because without it being on the MLS, they have no legal right to pay you anything. So remember to include that document. It's not like any other sale. You have to. Wait, wait, wait. So you should definitely first mention the name and phone number of your client first, and give that information up front. Oh, I'm like, what? No. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> okay, so you want to keep that information back. You want to tell them that you have an actual buyer and an actual offer, but do not disclose anything that mm -hmm. gives them a way to find your buyer and go around you. That's what I'm yeah. asking. So it's, if Matt and Julie and they have three obese little midgets, uh, they will probably <laughs> ransack your property. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, you remember them. Yeah. Yeah. So his best contact number is no, yeah. okay. no, no. Because I don't, you know, you keep it behind the paywall, aka, you yeah, know, okay. you. Because if you let it out of the out of the cat out of the bag, there's a there's a probably pretty good chance that that, that owner's going right around your ass and yeah. get right to the buyer. I mean, I know you would, Matt. 
as a response. <laughs> yeah, because apparently I'm just a bad person. <laughs> God, Greg. I didn't say that. You said that now. God. All right. So let's. Uh, there was something interesting that caught my eye on Inman News, and it was an app called Giftogram.com. Uh, this is kind of like. There's a lot of other features built into it, especially at the enterprise uh, level, if you are managing sales teams and different things like that. But uh, the 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 point of it being on Inman was as a way to send uh, closing gifts. So it's almost like an Amazon Prime. Uh, but a limited selection that are more ideal for client and uh, motivational gifts for staff. And so that's definitely an app worth checking out. It's giftogram.com. Like I said, there's some other features. So that, like, if you go to the homepage for that, especially on desktop, you'll see a lot of other things like, hey, you can manage your contacts and you know all, all that stuff and schedule things to go out at certain times. Great for when you're managing an entire team, if you're an employer uh, or if you have a real estate team or a brokerage or something like that. Maybe a, a good idea for gifts for your sales team. But if you're an individual agent, this looks like a pretty good way to... Uh, get some ideas for closing gifts and an easy, easy way to order and send them. Well, Matt, think about this, man. It, 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 it could uh, be something even easier than, than closing gifts. I mean, this could also be done on a very cool way uh, after you go to a listing appointment. Not, you don't even know if you're going to get yeah. it. You're going to send them something, boom, super quick, yep. you know, and you're out the door. I mean, yeah, there's, uh, cool. there's a guy in San Diego that does that. He, he works exclusively high-end uh, listings, like one and a half and over, mm -hmm. uh, one and a half million. And uh, yeah, he bring that's that's part of his lead follow-up practice. And he just has it. He has the personality for it. Like he'll send flowers. He'll send, you know, like little like a box of chocolates or something like that uh, to the you know someone if he doesn't take the listing right away. He'll do it if he uh, is following up on a buyer lead or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I mean if if it works. It, it's a bit, if it's congruent with your personality, like it is for him, it's perfectly congruent. Like it just it just matches his his style. He has style and a certain flair about him, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that works. So he gives them gifts that kind of like coincide with that, and gives them a preview of what it's like to work with him during the that kind of sales courting process. So hmm. yeah, I got like that for that. Yeah, I just downloaded it here. Um, I'm really I'm actually really interested in this, and I'm glad that they. Shit, that they got this going because yeah. uh, with this with this app, I mean, it doesn't matter how small of an item it is. Like, um, dude, Chris from Firepoint mm -hmm. uh, sent me this incredibly nice, you know, card, you know, handwritten by him, and he sent me how many of these? One, two, three. He sent me five Firepoint mugs. Oh, awesome, right? Now it's a small mug. I'm gonna to need to refill it like six times, but um, the, 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 it didn't cost him a lot. But it was a really kind gesture. So if he could go to a listing appointment and send a fifteen dollar little item, well, it's the gesture that's huge. Guarantee you, no one's doing it. And you know what? I'm gonna start doing because I know nobody else is doing that in my market. Absolutely guarantee no one else is doing it. Just find something cool and just send it off to him. Yeah, nice. God, we're smart, Matt. Genius, as I say. <laughs> right next to Edison. We're right next to Edison. Sure. Yeah. Well, this is why I send books, right? So, like the like the world that I run in, and the type of clients that I want, and therefore run into. Um, yeah, I mean, when, which is why I have, we have the new podcast coming out, pursuing results, where we interview somebody about one book that changed their life. The reason why I kind of went with that theme and books, and it's why books are part of like my follow process and stuff like that, is just because like with super successful people, there's such a passion for continuous learning that they have their favorite books and they're always looking for new book recommendations and it, they really, really appreciate it, Not either a recommendation or you just getting online and ordering and sending them a book. It's such a nice gesture that makes such an impact uh, that it works perfectly. So that like for, I found like what works for my market and for the people that I want to be in relationship with. So you have to find what that is for you. So like we, we talked to uh, Chris Angel here a while back and he was talking about uh, wine, right? Mm -hmm. So like if you blog about wine, you develop like this following and a little bit of tribe around that, well, guess what your ideal closing gift is? Like you get to know that person. You're working yeah. with them. You know exactly what they like. Get them a bottle of their favorite wine. Uh, get them a, you know, a funky wine opener or something like that, like a really nice one. Uh, it just it opens up uh, a whole other realm of really making your, your gifts both in the follow-up, like the lead follow-up stage and in the closing stage, really, really personalized. And it gives you the chance to make a really cool impact and get yeah. people talking about you in a really positive positive way. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like a no brainer and, and it is, it just takes that little extra mental work and thought to think in advance, Hey, I'm going to send them something. It's just a matter of what am I going to send them? And then you're kind of keeping your eye out for clues as to what they like and kind of making notes to yourself. And then you go back and follow through. Uh, there was a really good, like a high, high level speaker 
uh, that was on, I'm trying to think of what podcast it was on, and of course now that I say that I can't remember, it's one of the more obscure ones that I listen to, but he was talking about how, so when he does, when he speaks at like one of these uh, trade industry events or whatever, uh, like train, referred, like the AC, HVAC company has right. hired him for like five years to run their, say, their uh, like speak at their annual strategy conference wow. or something like that. So anyway, he was talking about how he, like, he makes notes. So like he would make like, such detailed notes that he knows five years ago at his presentation at that exact event that wow. so-and-so got up and like did something crazy like in the presentation, did something kind of funny and quirky in the presentation. Like he knew the guy's name, and when he went back, he was able to reference it during his latest speaking presentation. No way. Yeah, exactly. And it just like it makes a huge impact. So just simple things like that, like knowing that you're going to get something for somebody, and then just kind of taking notes through the process, uh, it, it gives you like just that little little act of discipline or just that little bit of follow through makes a huge impact to people. He was like, well, we had uh, Jay Salmon on, and uh, mm -hmm. I we we had such a good time with him. He had mentioned that he liked magic. I went out and got a magic book, like a coffee table one, sent it down to him. He was blown away. Yeah, absolutely just blown simple. away. Yeah, and yeah, it wasn't so, that much work, and it wasn't no. it wasn't like you were, you weren't even planning on doing that. It was just you, you, like you picked up on it. You're better at this than than I am, Greg, because you picked up on it. I didn't know exactly what uh, I didn't pick up on that clue, and you're like, oh yeah, he likes magic. Let's let's look for a book that we can send him, and you you picked one out and sent it to him, and uh, yeah, I mean, it just for for the amount of work involved in, in relation to the impact that it had on him and the relationship that we've developed since then. I mean, it was just it's way out of proportion to the effort it took for you to do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, guys, as you're listening to us right now, either live or on the replay, think about the client that you're working with right now or the person that you just picked up as a new buyer or a new seller. Go into Giftly. I signed up a I signed in as Facebook, and bam, I was just already in. It has all kinds of cool categories. I have one for like a library. So, there's a, a, there's a, a book here for 35 bucks. Giftly or Giftogram? Giftogram, sorry. Giftogram. So, this one is, is Manly Cooking Cookbook, right? <laughs> for 35 bucks. I mean, yeah. The Art of Motorcycle Racing. I mean, 49 bucks. I mean, this stuff, they're not expensive, you know? Yeah. And you can um, just just think of them. Watch how it will, but you have to, but the, Matt, the, the thing is that people have to understand, they have to give without expecting anything in return. You cannot yeah. give and say, well, what do you mean you didn't list with me? Oh, I, I got you the book. <laughs> they're like, hmm, good for you. And we're going to use it. But boy, boy now, right. you're That's a true right. buffoon. It's holding up one end of our coffee table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's give some shout outs and then we'll dive, we'll dive into some more questions. I see that you have our last one. Right. Dude, so yeah, so we a uh, little little teaser for the for the uh, pursuing results podcast. So we recorded another episode. Uh, this will be released in probably early September as we get closer to launching the live version. So far, we're recording episodes uh, with uh, with some super high level guys. So we recorded with a guy named Jeffrey Langmate who founded a company called the Evidence Based Chiropractor. This guy is a high level dude. Yeah, uh, super he's bright, great. super bright marketing mind. Just a smart dude overall. Uh, chiropractor spends his days like examining MRIs and recommending patient treatments normal and then, stuff. You know, just normal <laughs> stuff. And then spends his uh, his evenings building out this business and uh, knows a lot about marketing and uh, especially in the genius. online marketing world. Very, 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 very smart guy. Very so dude. we spent about 45 minutes with him talking about that book. And of course, Greg ordered the book, and now it's there. And now you're going to read it because it has big, uh, big fonts and pictures. Yeah. See, look, look. This is one of them. Oh, where is it? I can even understand this. Sale or pre-fire sale? Which is better? <laughs> pre-fire <laughs> sale. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's do some shout-outs. All right. So first of all, homing in, uh, I'll be hanging out with Christian Peter later this week. What? And uh, yeah, yeah, we're having uh, coffee on Friday. So anyway, Christian is the founder of, uh, co-founder, I should say, of Homing In. So Homing In is a, is a way, and it's an app for homeowners to request home valuations from real agents like you. So it's all it's free to everyone. Homeowners are finding it faster than agents right now. So essentially, if you go sign up and you pop in your area, there might actually be seller leads waiting for you because homeowners have requested a valuation and not gotten responses from agents. Agents because the agents don't know about it yet. So jump on this, and just in general, we should jump on this because let's.
let's not let somebody like Zillow figure out how to generate our seller Bastards. leads and then sell them back to us like Zillow has done with buyer leads. So go download Homing In. And then there's two resources I want to mention on our site. It's uh, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com or just the easy way is go to ReULive.com. And uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see two links. One is for Greg's favorite scripts. That's free. You can download that. That's a PDF of like 14 or 15 of Greg's favorite scripts along with links to videos where Greg favorite. actually goes through each script so you can hear the phrasing and the tonality and how it's actually used and you can see Greg's ugly mug talking through each one hey. and <laughs> hey. and then the other resource is uh, is our farming training course this is eight hours of nothing but solid content that takes you through how to find your farm, how to start the right farm, farm the right area, the right demographic or geographic farm, all of your prospecting methods, how to go after hot, you know, cold leads, warm leads, hot leads, and then two bonus videos on the events that you should be running, three types of events, and then how to really use Zillow, where you go super, super deep on like four key ways that you can use Zillow that most people just completely ignore, uh, and why Zillow should be your best friend. So, absolutely, the best way to get to that is just go to farmlikegreg.com. So those are uh, that's what I got. Yeah, awesome. I okay. So as always, guys, I right, so many. I can't keep up with them all. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna go to my calendar here super quickly. So I've been able to book with uh, Patty, uh, Dan, Alexandria, uh, Tarina, Matt, uh, Matt, Stacy, Rebecca. Uh, those are some of the more recent McDaniel Challenge uh, bookings. And then, so let's see some of Oh, dude, Marie. Dude, she's up in uh, Canada, dude. And I, it was so cool. She, like, teleported me in. Well, teleported. You know, I, I was sitting here, but I was on a huge, I was on a, on a panel in front of a couple dozen agents. I had no idea what I was, what I was looking like. And then they took photos and sent it to me. <laughs> I'm on like this 65 inch screen TV. I'm sitting there just, I'm like, God, I hope I wasn't picking my nose during that when I when they weren't talking to me, but that was a really cool event. Talked about scripts. So Marie, thank you so much. That was so, so, so much fun. Um, let me get some of the messages here. Al Alem, <clears throat> Mr. Abraham, dude. Sorry. I'm going to do that one. Uh, Stevie, uh, Denise, Mike, uh, Sabrina, uh, Trevor, Aaron, Adam, Lauren, my my good friend Miss Neely, Paul, my boy, homeboy Greg, I love that. Shannon, Dave, John, well, two Johns, Brian, the so John John, uh, the John John, the JJ, okay. and <laughs> Justin. Um, oh, a special shout out, boom to Misty, great job on doing the uh, Facebook Live. She was shaking at the knees and sweating profusely. I had to practice like a 50 times, but she finally went out and did it. Got like three or 400 likes and tons of comments. So she is going to start doing the more. So much love to you. Great work. Keep it up. So uh, McDaniel Challenge, guys, you guys, I talked about it before. Uh, we'll briefly jump into it now. Uh, September 13th. Wait a minute. February 13th. Good Lord. We're not in September yet. <laughs> <laughs> February 13th is my next opening for the McDaniel Challenge. I'm not doing one on Valentine's Day because I know all you lovebirds are going to be out smooching and eating chocolate and shit. Uh, and then uh, it's the 15th. So I'm not like, no, God damn it, Craig. What, the, is your, what is your problem? What mental deficiency are you missing? Um, uh, book up, guys. Get off the fence. Please get off the fence. I am not shitting you. At the, at the rate that we are going, you will be the March Kids. Yeah. Nobody likes the March Kids. Yeah. They're, no, the they're they're horrible. They're, they're just they, they're just lazy bums. They're like, they're, Matt's Matt's Matt kids are Matt's kids are friends with the March kids, and you know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, let's dive back in. So there's a there's a really good question that I, I think brings up a, a good point. Uh, Michael Minson, this is from the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Group, still says I'm organizing Lead Gen Power Hour at my market center and love to hear any tips you've seen that are highly effective for outbound prospecting. My goal is to increase production at our market center and create a culture of production. So we're a new market center. We don't have a lot of old habits to break. We just have new ones to learn. So what's worked for you? So ba based on that, here here's what I want you to go into, Greg. Okay. You have hired agents. Mm -hmm. You have summarily fired agents. <laughs> you, you have managed uh, uh, inside and outside calling assistants of various kinds. And then, of course, you are a cold calling master. You've had to motivate yourself to make the calls. Double you know it's call. not easy. You Double know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, a double black belt, or uh, I don't know, a, what is that, a, a slightly darker shade of black? I don't know. It's, it's, black rings on the end. Black, or is it slightly darker black? <laughs> slightly yeah. darker black. Yeah, for all of you Archer <laughs> fans, you'll get that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so my question to you is this. So if you're trying to do what he's doing, you're trying to build a culture of production, you're mm -hmm. trying to make it easy, you're trying to get agents together in this kind of collaborative environment and make calls together because that's definitely more motivating. It's motivating to see other people do that. But how do you do that with a group of agents? How would you approach that if you had that challenge? And how would you help a group of people come together and get on the phones at a certain time every, every day or every week to kind of motivate them to show up every time and do that? Alcohol. <laughs> alcohol and food okay. never fails okay. no I'm being deadly serious about that I, be um, I believe you okay. so <laughs> Bailey, Bailey's and donuts gotcha <laughs> again stop feeding your kids that shit man <laughs> damn no wonder they're fat that's right um, so uh, here in our office what we did we did pizza and wine uh, I think it was every Monday every Wednesday evening um, go get talk about something and then they would go to their offices and they do calls from like 5.30 to 6.30 or something like that, and then come back. So the book, Go For No, has really changed my mindset and the way that I prospect it, and it has actually helped set two CMA appointments today and yesterday off of having that mindset. So I would give an award away at, and make it something that's worthwhile, like people actually want it, maybe like a $100 gift card or something like that, right? But the awards are here. We get one uh, uh, gift card for the most appointments set. Everybody, that's pretty standard, right? But then you have another award for the most epic fuck up of all times. Like, how bad did someone tell you to go pound sand? And how many <laughs> times did they drop the crash the and burn award? Yes. Okay. And I, if you, if you do that, I guarantee you, you'll start seeing a trend that the person with the most appointments will also be the person with the most, you know, epic, you know, f offs from a you know, prospect because. Their hustle is harder. They talk about in the, they talk about that in the book. Go for no, and so I didn't go for appointments yesterday, and I didn't go for appointments today. I was going for twenty five no's. And it, yeah, I was going to ask you about that if you if you would have them take that approach, which is hey, we're gonna like we have this time set aside, uh, so we're shooting for this time, or like if you get twenty no's or thirty no, whatever the case is, it takes a long your time. Contact rates, but yeah, that would take a long time to get twenty. Dude, I mean, if, let's, it let's took say, an hour and a half each day. To get to get twenty five no's, an hour and a half. Yeah. I did an hour and a half live Facebook, and people are coming back like, "You're still on." I had dinner and wine. I'm like, "Stop talking <laughs> to me about wine." Yeah, I'm still grinding. <laughs> that's right. But no, it, that's what I did. I got my twenty five. Like today, dude, I had nine numbers left. Nine numbers left. I'm like, "Please, for the love of all that's holy in this in this land, please tell me, please someone tell me to go fuck myself, please." <laughs> Please, please. And I was calling into an well, Greg, area. you could have just called me. I mean, come on. <laughs> that's, my, that's my standard. I don't even have to know what's going on. That's my standard greeting whenever you call me <laughs> outside of the show. And I just, I just pick up and tell you to go screw yourself. Uh, oh, that's Greg. Hold on. Hold on, Kristen. Greg, go fuck yourself. All right, babe. What, what <laughs> we're we doing? Angry. That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, I got my 20 bath. Exactly. No, but I, I had nine numbers, dude. And I literally honestly thank the person on the other end. I'm like, you have no idea how thankful I am to hear that you're not going to be selling. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. And they were just like, what just happened here? Why is he so excited? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I had to get a certain number. I'm so thankful you're staying put. Okay. Talk to you later. Boom, high five. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they totally took them off, off, off of course. But if you make it, if you make it fun for them, if you, if you help them desensitize themselves to that, the pesky little two lettered word, no, and help them understand they're not saying no to Matt. They're saying no to the offer that Matt is offering to them, which is in buying or selling real estate. Okay. It's just, it's just, they're saying no to that. They still like Matt. They just don't like the offer. So get them used to hearing that and being okay with the word no, and then have a contest for the biggest screw up or the biggest F off from a, from a prospect. It will make it fun because you're going to come back and have epic stories of like, okay, guys, who's got, the, who's got some doozies today? And they're going to want to compete. They're going to want to make it fun. Now it's something different, you know? Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah, there's uh so I did an episode of the team building podcast with Jeff Cohn. Uh, we did an episode with his success manager, Andy Cuny. So this is the guy that on his team actually manages the 25 agents and meets with them one-on-one -on -one each week to help 
keep them on track, hold them mm -hmm. accountable to their lead follow process, and keep them motivated, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about like some of the psychological triggers and techniques that he uses just to kind of motivate certain people. Like he'll get to know people, and then he will not pit them one against the other because they'll actually do that on their own because of the way that like when you have that number of agents they kind of end up getting into clicks or groups based on their production and you have like four or five agents and clusters that'll be around the same production level and then another tier down below that'll be at another production level and so forth so they kind of group themselves naturally by what they're producing right so then he'll just kind of say like hey you notice that uh, so and so is in the office making calls for a couple hours this morning and it's like hmm I should probably get in there and make some calls too. Mm -hmm. Like he'll just, you know, just a little bit of like, just a little nudge of like, just and not, not like, not pushing, but just informing them of what other people are doing to make an extra effort to get one more deal that month or whatever the case is. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting just the power of competition in that environment. Not focusing on the number of deals necessarily, but just focusing on like the effort and the activities that someone else is putting in. And, they're, and it just makes you want to go back and say, hmm, yeah, I don't want to fall behind. I should, I should put in a little bit extra time on the dialer today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, basically, you're poking the bear. Like, mm -hmm. hey, hey, hey. But you can, if you guys wanted to compete with people internationally and nationally, you can use um, P Pipeline Wizard. Mm. Uh, he's yep. offering it free to brokerages, and then you can say, oh, let's say you know, Matt and I live in San, you know, he lives in San Diego. I live in you know San Francisco East Bay. So I, if Matt was an active agent. I say, okay, Matt, I'm going to challenge you to a prospect off uh, this week. Let's see who can get the most appointments and the most, you know, w you know, blah blah blah. And then you track it in the Pipeline Wizard software, and I can see where Matt, where what what Matt's doing, and how he's, you know, you know, competing and, and beating me, or I'm beating him. So it's so another great free software. Um, Jesse Garcia has it. It's awesome. He and I rap about it all the time. Although I'm horrible at it because I just recently had to get back into doing all my prospecting myself. <laughs> Because of the pesky little law that came down, damn it! Um, but it is something that the, get a hold of it. Uh, Pipeline Wizard, you guys are absolutely going to love it. It's going to be great for either teams, offices, you know, maybe just another agent in the office that you want to compete with that's pissing you off. You're like, look, you talk all this mad game. We'll see if you can actually do it, and then you know, make them put their money where their mouth is. Would be my suggestion because okay. that would be fun. Yeah, I like it. Okay, it's, cool. it's kind of like mayors, you know, of different cities and during the Super Bowl. That's, yeah, yeah. That is that is the game on the ice, right? With the with the, with the little black pucks. No, no. Football is the one with the uh, with the sticks with the nets, and you throw the thing, the ball, and into the hoop. Oh, oh, got it. The one with the black and white spots on it, right? You run around, you kick it. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> For everyone who doesn't know, I'm like a sports retard. Um, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, you 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 mildly you 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 pay attention to baseball out of the corner of your eye. That's that's about the the impression that I get. In between naps. Yeah, in between. Naps. <laughs> yeah, well, good and because as Adam Carolla says, baseball is three minutes of action packed into three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's a there's a question from Christian Fernandez that says, "Hello, agents!" Exclamation point. How many times do you call a single lead in a day? Is three too many? So, Greg, what say you? How many? Wait a minute. How many times do you call an agent is three too many? How many times do you call a single lead in a day is three too many? Oh, is he is three too many? No, dude. I mean, if you want to get him on the phone, dude, call him, call him, call him, call him, call him, text him, call him, call him. It's like Stewie, mom, mom, mom. Finally, they're gonna be like, what? Hi. <laughs> you just want to say, oh, I'm sorry, I must have missed you. Try different phone numbers. I had uh, Midori call one of my leads. I've been trying to get a hold of for weeks, right? Mm -hmm. I had he wouldn't he recognized my number. He wouldn't pick it up. I'm like, hey, call this number, set him, uh, figure out what's going on. He picked up on the first ring. So change change your tactics. But I mean, move around a little bit. Be a little sneaky, man. This is this is guerrilla warfare, man. You got to start getting out there and doing some some tactful stuff. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five phones in my office. Yeah. Call from a different number every other time. Do your cell phone. <laughs> right. Go out. Go out to talk to your buddy in the office and be like, "Hey, bro, let me borrow your cell phone really quickly." Like, gotcha, bitch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. All right. I, I like it. So oh, three is not too many, and call from multiple phones, and call many, many times in a row, and if well, you really want to get a hold of them. 
Yeah, call them back to back. Literally, this is not. A, I mean, it's kind of a joke, but it's not really a joke. Call them back to back. When 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 have you done this, and under what circumstances? That's what I. Internet want. leads. I'm starting to do it on internet leads. Yeah, that I believe. So that that's where I think this applies is when they don't know who it is. And they're on a website, and look, you're just trying to get them on the phone because if you don't get them on the phone in five minutes, you might as well have thrown away that lead anyway. Yeah. I can see being super aggressive uh, and and doing that. Like that's not really lead follow up. That I mean, it is. It's it's lead response. That that's what it is. It's lead response, not lead follow. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, I mean, yes. if you're gonna if you're gonna call them, well, why why does that have to be calling? Why can't it be a call, a text, a call? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you ask Greg Harrelson or Joshua Smith, they will slap you across the face for not texting people. Because oh, yeah. that, that's what they're finding works the best. But don't do it in an auto texture. Then you're going to get fined. Do it with your, your yes. little nuggets. Right, exactly. Mm hmm. That's what I'd say. No. All right. Anyway, okay. So, uh, all right. So, expired. Uh, Trina says, uh, Trina Gonzalez fan says, expired listing appointment tomorrow. Seller says, well, it's fine to come talk to me and look at it, but I'm not signing anything. I have a guy who wants to buy it coming over here on Friday. Then what is the point? <laughs> That is a great question. Yeah, then I mean, I, I would still take the appointment because I, I, my bullshit meter is going on off. Uh, I think that's, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like I, I would venture to say that's an excuse for not signing anything. Number one, number uh, two, yeah. what are the odds that some guy comes over and he's he's been listed with an agent and sees the value in an agent, but then somebody's coming over to buy it and then what? He's gonna he's gonna do it for sale by owner? Like it goes to the yep. previous agent? Like what? You know, like. Who cares? Like, just get over there and do the appointment, knock it out of the park, and uh, make them want to sign with you anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, you can also offer them, hey, if he doesn't end up buying it, why don't we put it up, put it back on the market? I'll put that buyer on a list of one uh, that if he comes back, then you know we'll we'll walk we'll work on a reduced commission, not no commission, yeah, a reduced commission. Too. Yeah. Because um, you want to make it an ultimate win-win for them. Also, I mean, then we can go on all the questions you need to ask a FISBO or an expired, you know, what's your last experience? What are you expecting? What kind of communication? What do you need to net? What's your ultimate reason for selling? What's your timeline? You know, blah, 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 blah. All the questions you want to ask, right? But just like Matt said, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan. I, I, my bullshit meter wasn't going off so much on the buyer. Uh, but I do, I don't know if you would maybe wait till after that guy comes through and then set it up so you don't waste your time. Cause you get back on the phone and do some more calls. Say, you know what? Why? I know it's Wednesday. You got a guy coming on Friday. Why don't I come over on Monday and I'll call you on Monday. And if you haven't sold it to him, then we'll set enough time for me to come on up. Cause I certainly, certainly don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Or you do the listing appointment, you meet with them and then you use it as a springboard to do some door knocking or calls around that neighborhood. Say, you can hey, do that neighborhood. Yeah, you could do that as well. Yeah. I mean, personality types, are, I guess, is what it really comes down to. Yeah. So, I mean, what are you more comfortable with? I mean, if you know, like I know that if I sit on in this chair and I do calls, I know that every about 200, 250, I'll get a very solid lead. So what is my hour and a half better, better spent doing? Prepping for someone who may or may not be listing. And I'm going to go out there and they may sell to someone else. But I could also leverage it and say, okay, I'm going to parlay this into, into prospecting in the neighborhood, talking about the just listed and what's going on. Do they have anyone looking to buy in the area? Or stick with my strong suit and do the calls. I mean, it really depends on what you want to do, what the weather is. I mean, but mm -hmm. as long as you get your prospecting in, that's the main point. Yeah, I like it. All right. So uh, Ed Mukwit says, uh, what up, Ed? This, is an, this is an objection handler. So he's, he's just giving the objection right up front. So the owner says, Look, I don't see the point of having my house on the MLS. How does that actually sell my house if I put it back on the MLS? Everybody just wants to list my home. Oh, I read this one. But how does that how does that help me? Um, sir, it's called the World Wide Web. Have you heard of it? It's, it's, it's this whole global event that takes place. Um, having it listed? Are you trying? But not Zillow. To <laughs> what well, does that have to do with anything? Putting it on putting it on Zillow as a Fizbo gets it on the World Wide Web. Yes, but sir, you're also not having the negotiation power of a skilled agent behind you and also having my connections. We also have been working with a lot of buyers. This may be a perfect property. You may not even have to go on the uh, doing open houses. Maybe we might be able to bring in an offer you know, right now. That's actually happening with one of the homes on the board right now. We have a home that we can show to three of our buyers right now and not have to put this elderly couple through all this rigmarole of getting it ready and everything else. So that's what we're doing. I mean, that is the power of working with buyers and sellers because the, the point of putting it 
on the uh, on the um, MLS is because Zillow, Truly, and a lot of these other uh, systems out there keep properties on their system for months at a time. They're either pending or sold to attract more eyeballs from the consumers than to sell us, the agents, bullshit leads of people that are looking for stuff. So not everything on there is accurate. That's why the power of going on the MLS is because there's a fiduciary relationship signed. The listing agent has the right and duty legally to, to get the highest and best price. Zillow has the right and duty to get the highest and best price for their investors, not for you. Yeah. That's why. And besides, God damn it, I want a fucking commission. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, well, that, I would actually use that. I, I think, uh, I want a commission, the, damn it. The best way I heard, uh, this is from Todd Bates, who basically is not even around anymore as far as like real estate coaching, but back in the day, uh, I, I picked up his, uh, his marketing and listing, uh, program, which is really, really good. I listened to those CDs over and over and over and over again. Anyway, the, uh, the objection handler that he gave was, look, 80% of the sales come from the MLS. It's agents mm -hmm. talking to other agents about homes that are on the market that are listed with agents. That's the bottom line. He says that you, you may not like it. Um, you know, there, there's other ways to list your home, and they may work, and they do work for some people 15 to 20% of the time. It could be a sign in the yard. It could be a friend. It could be a, a relative. It could be you know a l listing on the Internet. At the, at the time, the Internet was not as big. So, but basically, look, the home, 80% of the time, the home is going to sell because it's listed on the MLS because some other agent is seeing it knowing that they will get a commission by coming to your place. If you list it anywhere else outside the MLS, you lose that, you lose access to 80%, and you're basically taking a chance that you're going to list your home and sell it with the other 20% of the market. Which is why would you do that? I mean, just in terms of marketing a product, why would you cut yourself off from 80% of the market and expect to sell for the highest price? Make zero that, sense. Yeah, that that to me is the best. Like you, like I think people instinctively understand. Hey, the more more demand equals higher price. So I think you appeal to that, and you say, look, the more people we get this out to, the better the odds you have of getting the offer that you want to get. The more people you cut yourself off from and try to just narrow down the market that you're appealing to, the less likely you are to get more offers, and fewer offers means lower price. Period. That's, that's my favorite. Good. Yeah, I, I really like that one a lot. Um, what was the stat? Um, listing it with an agent, you'll get national averages. You get forty thousand dollars more. You will be on the twenty days less on the open market, and the stress level will be absorbed by the agent, not by you, because people are going to make you know comments about the property that you might not like to hear. That's what we, we're the buffer zone. You're going to take the full brunt of those, and you're going to take a lot of stress and a lot of legal liability on. So there's a lot of there's just a I'm lot sorry. of reasons. Kind of like when I first walked into your place for the first time, Greg. <laughs> you, took the, <laughs> you took the full brunt of me walking in. I'm like, what the f is this? <laughs> yes. Well, you're getting you're getting your act together. I like it. You've you've yes. hired a very nice gentleman with a lot of flair, uh, who <laughs> is cool. uh, he's yes very colorful and he is uh, getting your place in tip top shape. Yep. So that you look yep. like yep. a normal human being, an adult human being with an actual place uh, that other people, such as yep. women of the, uh, you know, people of the opposite sex, might want to spend time in. Not just drop stuff off and run for their hills. Like, uh, uh, it's a delivery. <laughs> Throw in the door. Run. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm very happy for you. I am too. My yeah. house is coming along quite nicely. I just... All right. So let's cover this one last objection, or uh, and maybe it's a condition. We'll, we'll see. So Alonzo Gutzman says, any good script or objection handler for someone saying they would rather wait till spring to relist? And I bring that up at this time because we were talk just talking to Aaron Wittenstein the other day, and this is a weird time. Like, school is starting. People are taking their last vacations. It's it, In some markets, it's very slow. In his market, it's very slow. And... Uh, so the time has come now where people's attention are kind of distracted by school. Mm -hmm. And so I can see this objection coming up, starting to come up now, because now it's officially like, okay, well, we missed out on this year of moving while we had the chance to, like, move school districts and yada, yada. So you know that that objection is going to come up more and more as we get closer to the holidays. So we've only got two months before people really start using that excuse because you're coming up on Halloween and yada yada. God, so, where did this year go, man? I, I know. Good Lord. Um, oh, and it's, nice. it's hot outside. So uh, for the first 
time in my life I'm actually looking forward to the summer ending. It's the, literally <laughs> the only time. Growing up in Nebraska, when the when fall basically meant, hey, snow's about to come, and you're about your life is about to get super miserable. Uh, you never <laughs> every day you squeezed every juice of every summer day out like the last drop of an orange. Uh, now I'm like, hey, when's when summer? When's fall getting here? So uh, anyway, that's so what, what say you? Plug, please. Well, it's not that I, I have air conditioning and I can run it anytime I want, but it's just it's God, it's five to eight hundred bucks a month if you want to run the air conditioning. How so. do you? I mean, what do you keep like? You hang meat in your living room? I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that is just insane, man. I mean, I know San Diego, baby, San Diego, gotta love it. San Francisco East Bay player it gets mm -hmm. like hundred and fifteen out up here sometimes. I yeah, mean, I believe it. This shit gets hot. I yeah. just actually suffer through it and just sweat. <laughs> we'll go down right. by my pool. But, I mean, when I have to, I turn it on. But that's, I, right. you're getting back somewhere. Objection handler. Yeah, potentially. Well, it's an old unit that doesn't get uh, – the owner has not has not really committed. He's not committed, not committed. to making the necessary improvements. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for having my back, playboy. Yeah, fuck this other dude. He's talking shit. Jose will mess him up, man. He's no joke. Uh, so the objection on this, guys, is basically you, you need to ask questions. So you don't want to relist until what, spring, you said? Yeah. Or fall. Why? And why do you want to relist until spring? Is it, you know, they're going to say, well, it's the best time for buying or selling. Then you go and talk to them about this whole internet thing that's been around for a little while and people find homes on it all the time. They never stop doing that. And <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not the right time of year. Uh, honey, stop Zillow searching. Nope, we can't do that. The real estate agent gods say you can't do that. No, that conversation has never been had. Uh, people are always being transferred. There are people always having kids. There's people always, unfortunately, passing away, losing jobs, getting jobs. All right. Life is going to continue. So show them that. Talk about your successes. I mean, last year, we had one of our busiest quarters was the fourth quarter. I mean, we're, we were just running flat out, especially in November, December. Dude, it was crazy town how many deals we did in the end of the year. Really? And it was like, oh, it's the holiday season. Nobody does deals. Bullshit. Yeah, well, especially that that's what I find so amusing. I mean, yes, there's there's it's busy, but it used to be like when I was growing up in the Midwest, when man, like things shut down in October. Like you didn't want to go outside. You didn't want to drive anywhere. Like nobody wanted to look at homes because there was two feet of snow on the ground. Well, First of all, it's not home. even like that anymore in the Midwest. Like we don't have snow until after Christmas usually. But I mean, in the East Bay, I mean, you're talking it's it's 70 and gorgeous in November and December. Well, Why it, wouldn't you want to be out looking at homes? It's a frigid 67 outside. I need to bundle up oh, with a oh. scarf. Ooh. Ooh, man! Let me get my cardigan. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta put my gotta put my Converse tennis shoes on. Put my cardigan yeah. on. Go look hey, at home. God, God forbid we have a little bit of rain. Get over your pussies. But you know, you know, in all honesty, just show them. Look, guys, here are the numbers. Look, this is how much real estate was sold in the fourth quarter, or in this month, or whatever. Go back to the history. Go back, you know, 15, 14, 13, 12. Just show them, look, guys, it's increasing. Look, that's this whole internet thing increases, or it's a steady amount of people. It's, it's held strong for the past several years. Your home could be one of them. You know, there's no reason. Well, I'm going to get less for my house. How, could, how do you know? Remember, they can offer you whatever you want. It's up to you to take it. Yeah. So you don't have to be offering your house for 500000 Someone goes, okay, I'll give you three fifty, and you're like, okay, I guess I have to take it. No. You can yeah, say, it's not an auction. It's, no, it's not an auction. Yeah. It's not an auction at all. So, you know, I show again, show them value. Go to NAR, go to CAR, go to whatever national association or uh, state association you belong to. Get some statistics on, you know, when homes are selling and how fast they're selling in different quarters and different months. Present it, put it into a, a little booklet, and that can be part of your listing presentation. Then you, then you go out. So that's how I would handle it. Cool. All right. Well, let's wrap this one up. There's a couple of uh, announcements I want to make, and then we uh, give a call for the Botano Challenge one last time. So yeah. make sure to go to uh, farmlikegreg.com. Check out the farming video training course. Uh, if anybody's in San Diego, I'm going to be at the uh, San Diego Realtor Expo. Uh, it is yeah. Tuesday, September 13th at the San Diego Convention Center. Uh, we're not doing a booth for Real Estate Uncensored or anything like that like we're doing at the main car expo in September. Uh, I'll just be hanging out. I'm sure there'll be other people there that I will uh, know. And so if you are going and you want to uh, link up, connect at the event, chit chat for a few minutes, uh, just message me on Facebook. Uh, find me at facebook.com slash pursuing results. And then I have set up a new Facebook page specifically oh. for pursuing results for the podcast and all the other content uh, that we'll be putting out on like systems and scaling up your business and marketing and things like that. So go like that page. It's facebook.com slash pursuing results LLC. 
And that is the easiest way to find that. You'll also find the first clip uh, from me and Greg's new podcast uh, from him. That was fun. And it's live. And we're live. And we're live. I don't know if we're live. It says we're live. Matt's coming back in, guys. He's coming back in. I am. I'm back. Yeah, hey, there you are. Yeah. Oh, God, I don't know if they've been listening to me, watch me, watching me dance like an name. Like, we're going live. We're going live. Here he goes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> yeah, so what'd you guys miss? Um, pretty much everything from booth. Really? From, yeah. From you, oh, from the booth. Oh, from not getting a booth. Yeah. Not getting a so, booth. So, yeah. uh, okay. So if you want to link up and connect and chit chat at that San Diego, uh, realtor convention, uh, just shoot me a message on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash pursuing results. And then, uh, the other thing I was mentioning while apparently was not broadcasting live was the new podcast. So there was a specific page set up for that, uh, for pursuing results, LLC. And uh, go like that page, and on that page is the uh, the clip from the Greg Harrelson interview that we've already done. It's one of the first ones that we're releasing. And Harrelson, dude, that was a great, great interview, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was an awesome interview, dude. Yeah. Awesome. So we interview. talked about uh, Chet Holmes' book, The Ultimate Sales Machine, which was a huge aha in Greg Harrelson's life. It's also the inspiration behind the whole concept of viral marketing. So it was a huge influence on Frank Klesitz. Uh, I mean, it's, it is a classic book. It is an amazing book that's had an effect on a lot of people. If you have not read it, go buy the book. But especially mm -hmm. go check out the Facebook page for the podcast and all the other content we're putting up there. And check out that clip of Greg Harrelson sharing what his big aha mo mo uh, moment was from the book. So that's yeah. all I got. What do you got for uh, for the McDaniel Challenge, dude? McDaniel Challenge, guys. I'm not kidding around. I know you guys. I really appreciate you guys that are reaching out and you're like, I know it's kind of booked out a long ways, and it is February 13th as of this recording, August 17th. February 13th is going to be my next time that I'm going to be available for a coaching call, guys. I am blessed beyond words that you guys are taking me up on this. I'm so excited that you guys are finding value in what Matt and I are doing and yeah. that you actually want to spend an hour or two with me. Um, and so it, with that being said, uh, please get yourself out there, guys. It, you can get a hold of me, 925-915-1978. Again, 925-915-1978 is my personal cell phone number, which is right here. Look, it, the screen the screen even glows. It means it's working. I pay my bills. Uh, or Facebook message me. Um, also, go follow me on Facebook. Please don't friend me. Please, please, please. I have like 275 friends requests I cannot get to. So if you guys are watching this or anything else, please uh, follow me. Follow Matt. We do Facebook Lives, um, Snapchat, some um, REU444. But book up before it gets done, guys. But follow me. Matt and I talk about different things that are a little bit more close to our hearts on our Facebook Lives. I do circle prospecting and teach on specific subjects. Matt does talks about books or part of a book that he's reading. Totally different styles, as you can obviously know. Uh, here, but we want to keep giving more value to you guys in every way possible. So if you're watching our ugly mugs for the first time, we're sorry you haven't found it sooner. <laughs> but you know what? Follow us on other stuff and we will keep bringing the goodness. So don't be a March kid. They hang out with Matt's kids. <laughs> All right, and with that horrible insult, we will wrap, a, wrap this show up. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys. We are back on Friday with an interview with a top producer named Sue Henson. You're so back. that is Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, it is officially just a one-man show, Greg, for that show. It is officially a one-man show for just Friday. Don't you get your hopes up. I'm coming back swinging on Monday. <laughs> All right. You're like, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I was going to say, I have to send you the link, so it's, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you dick, I totally see you do that. Like, no, nope, not something like that. That's I guess right. Greg didn't get back from his trip. <laughs> That's right. It's the Matt, Matt and Matt show. All right, guys. 
We will see you guys on Friday. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all the questions and all the interaction. Make sure to, uh, on the future shows, uh, make sure to friend request me and message me throughout the show. We'll bring your questions on and get them answered live on the show. Until Thanks then, thank you so much, guys. We'll see you on Friday. Later, guys.